Justin Mr. Kodin for inviting us here. I am Altaf and I am a practicing lawyer at JNK High Court Srinagar. And I'm into practice from last five years. This session, as we you know, I'm gonna say we, we have been talking about the, the torture, executions, and disappearances in the countries of Nepal, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Sri Lanka. But if we see in this part of the country itself, the state of JNK has been in turmoil, in armed turmoil, I must say, since from last 25, 26 years. And in these years, we have seen the worst. If I straightly come to the torture itself, in, in Kashmir, it's even today, things have not changed. Even today, we have, in every town and in every village, we have a torture center, not a detention center. Detention center for us means a completely different different place, which is quite safe for us. But we have a torture center in every village and in every town. We had very, very famous torture centers even in 90s, like the ones of you know Guantanamo or even Abu Ghraib's. Our to torture centers were ma named like Papa Two. It was a very I'm going to say very dangerous place wherein you know, hardly anybody who was taken there, he came alive. And there are very horrible stories who have survived out of those very torture centers after they were taken to those torture centers. And second is the place wherein you know we have the cargo facilities available. There is an army camp there and a SOG special operations group, group camp there, which is still in existence. Even today, when people are picked up, they are taken that very place, and after they come out, if at all they survive, if at all they you know come out alive, they are half dead. They are half dead. And if we come to the you know methods of employment of the torture itself, we have seen um, um, I'm going to say almost every practice of the world, every torturing text of the world has been implemented in Kashmir. Be that you know the the rolling of your legs and the, the burning of the genital organs, even you know, the electric short shocks implement to the genital, genital organs, only a few people have survived out, out of those very torture practices. Leave, leave aside the waterboarding tactics and all that, all things, all things have been implemented and employed, employed in Kashmir itself. And of course, there have been multiple and numerous number of deaths because of torture. I will cite just two, three incidents, just a single incident. I am from a place in you know, Kashmir that's called a Sopor. Sopor is, you know, I'm going to say, very, known very notoriously in Indian circles and very nicely in Pakistani circles and very nicely in the Kashmir circles itself. There's a village called Sangrama. One of the boys of that very place, he was enrolled in an institution in Delhi. He was perhaps enrolled in uh, for engineering itself. He came to his uh, house after two years, and the moment he entered his, entered his house, his friends came and just took him out. When he came out of his house, he was picked up by the nearby post of the CRPF. His name is Javed. He was picked up and tortured very brutally, and then after he was released also. But just after his release, in four hours, he succumbed to his torture and died. One thing. And if we come to the the part of executions itself, well, in Kashmir we have extrajudicial ex executions and also the fake encounters. In the shape of extrajudicial killings itself, we have so many I'm going to say so many incidences, incidences, which are really heartbreaking. There is an incident that you know a guy from a village called as Silu, his name is Tahir, was Tahir. He was married to a girl, and on the first night of his marriage, the nearby army camp, they had you know, implemented a rule of their own in that play, very place, that whosoever you know, organizes or manages a function, may that be a marriage function, they had to get a permission, prior permission from the said army camp. Though this family had done that thing also, but he was taken up on the very first night of his marriage, taken to the army camp, nearby army camp, and then you know, when his family visited in the morning, he was not released. And it was only in, in the evening that 
the army camp informed their family that you know he was he he, he actually took us to a uh, militant hiding place and there he was killed and only his one leg was returned back he was torn to pieces by a bomb blast and it is on record that there was no encounter at all on that very day in that very area and if we see the human rights defenders human rights defenders the lawyers have suffered a lot while working on the human rights issues in kashmir itself so we have a very famous uh, case of maybe colin knows that also the case of jalil andrabi he was a human rights advocate a very nice brilliant advocate of jnk high court trainer he was he was filing he, he he filed as many number of cases of human rights violations as he could and one day in the evening while he was returning back from the court to his home he was picked up he was stopped in the way by a by a army uh, major i don't remember his name this time some singh he was he he was uh, stopped and then you know after 2 3 days his body was fished out of the jhelum which is a river in kashmir so he was killed that army general though he has been indicted by the courts because he was a lawyer so lawyers pursued that that his matter with more energy though that army uh, i mean i say major has been indicted by the courts there but till date till date he has not been produced because that army general is thought to be thought to be you know uh, hiding somewhere in canada and even there are reports that he died also but that that part of the story is not believed by the kashmiri people there and if we see the fake encounters i'm just trying to be very sharp very quick we have you know patribal fake encounter case which followed you know shortly after there was execution of six in a village in kashmir itself chatti singpora there was a massacre of six and 35 six were killed and on the other day of the morning there was a report in the newspaper that in, in an encounter the army killed some five militants who were responsible for the killing of the killing of those very six in that very village but later on the cbi itself the premier investigating agency of the country itself that indicted and it proved that was a fake encounter because those guys they were passed after they were killed they were passed off as terrorists but later on it turned out that they were local kashmiri laborers actually that case even went to the supreme court and we know what has happened to the fate of that very case also and if we see the the the, the kind of uh, we had we had one more you know very famous fake encounter called as machal encounter machal m h c h i l it's a it's a very remote place in kashmir some guys were taken by uh, by a renegade who was working with the army uh, with with a promise that he will get them a job but once they were taken up they were they were they were killed and later on later on they were passed as terrorists but ultimately it proved out to be it was a fake encounter because they were very innocent people of kashmir and if we see in the year 2010 when you know it was very peaceful protests were going on there were a killing of some 125 or 30 130 people who were very innocent guys like me or even small children they were killed i'm going to say very targeted killings by at the hands of the police this is of the field of execution and now if we come to this with disappearance is part of because this topic deals with the same thing disappearance is in kashmir we have a lot of disappearances the government puts a figure around 3000 or 3500 that is admitted by the government itself by the agencies and the people of kashmir we have an organization there that's called as apdp association of the parents of disappeared persons which looks after the cases of these disappeared people they put the figure by around 10000 people where have those people gone and those people we can have a trace by you know finding unmarked mass graves in kashmir a phenomena which is only found in kashmir we have unmarked mass graves and yes i admit that you know this is a very big problem of disappearances you know it even you know it it, it just proliferates in the family itself we have we have a very distinctive feature of having half widows because those those women who are who were married and whose husbands got you know let's say disappear or were unfortunately disappear they are not in a position to you know call themselves whether they are they can continue to be married or i'm going to say they are widows that's why a phenomena of widows i leave you with these thoughts and thank you very much once again thank you very much uh, if we have any questions you have to respond to them a uh, very brief comment and very quick questions let's take two or three of them for jawab okay uh, you have a comment no no for jawab i have a question for jawab question yeah yeah for jawab jawab okay let we will come to that Uh, okay, uh, you can just.
is 12.42. Yeah. Uh, we have to wind up. It's already one so hour. We take questions in the next next. Okay. Session. Let me wind up and we can then continue later on. Um, so, uh, I think the uh, um, uh, Adab, you can please take your seat. Thank you. So, thank you.